I'm going to open this box from Devier. It's their Nomad boot and if you want to see what it's like, keep watching. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording on, the Wajit people. Now today I'm going to unbox this Devier Nomad boot. I have to let you know though that it was sent to me for review, so bear that in mind even though I will give you a completely honest pros and cons review because there was no arrangement about what I had to say and Devier never uh, was given this video to review before I released it. So let's go into it and have a look at what's in this box. This arrived yesterday at work and I, I obviously took it out of the uh, packing cardboard box that, that it was shipped in and I did take a peek inside but I haven't actually disturbed anything because I wanted to preserve <laughs> the, the unboxing experience. So let's take a look at what's in the box. Uh, so it's covered in tissue paper. Here's the boot. They come with... Is it one or is it two? A single... A single Devier boot bag. Big one. It'll fit both in. Uh, generally, I, I think I prefer two. One for each boot because they could scratch each other on the inside. But these are... Uh, tough work boots, so I think that's fine. They each come individually, individually wrapped in plastic, oh, and they've got this uh, filler inside the boot, so that's nice. Take out the plastic, get rid of it. And there it is. This is the Nomad Generation 2 Last. Uh, it's been redesigned. I think the, the last has been designed to accommodate removable insoles. So I'll just uh, go through what I remember of what Gustavo, the owner of uh, 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 Devier, told me. Um, so let's remove this thing, which I like. That's kept nice. Very long laces, goodness. Those could go around your ankle a few times. <laughs> uh, more stuffing on the inside. Very protected. Is that it? Yes, that's it. So, uh, from what I know, this is uh, in uh, suede. I think it's called cognac suede, uh, Mexican tannery. It feels nice. I, I must say, it doesn't smell very leathery. I think there is a, a fair bit of tanning uh, liquors left in the in the in the boot, um, but. You know, it's not an unpleasant smell. It's not plasticky or, or, or uh, oily or, or smells like thinners. It's just a, a different leather smell. Not, not the sort of Halloween classic uh, Chrome XL or the Charles Evstead very neutral smell. <laughs> um, not unpleasant, just different. It's leather lined. I understand the insole. Here we go. It's a removable comfort insole, which is leather topped and then uh, feels like foam rubber on the inside. Uh, what else? No longer using fiber or synthetic lasting boards. Uh, there's natural vachetta lead, leather lasting board on the inside. Uh, Three-quarter gusseted tongue. Nicely done. I love half gusseted tongues. And they give you this little loop to put the laces in, but if you have a semi-gusseted tongue, there's no, no real need. So let's take a look at this. It's in suede. Uh, as I say, it's called cognac. A black wedge sole. Now, some people hate cream wedge soles. I don't mind them. Uh, different design. So I'm guessing this is um, proprietary, but it looks as if it'd be very comfortable uh, with a good grip. You can see the veg tan midsole. Uh, it's not polished by any means. It's made to look rough, which I think I quite like actually. Uh, and then you can see the welt there as well. So it is good you welted. It's 
360 degree Goodyear welted, which means there's a, there's a leather welt that goes round. Uh, the insole and the turned in nappers are sewn on the inside to that welt and the outside of the welt is stitched through the midsole and then this wedge sole is glued on. You don't have to worry that the outsole is not, is not uh, stitched. Modern glues these days will take, it's impossible to separate unless it's done badly. Uh, if you take a look at the stitching, I think it's pretty neat. There's a little bit of loose thread there, but you just burn it off with a match. But otherwise clean and consistent. The feel of the suede, uh, let's be frank, does not rival the soft hand of uh, uh, Charles F. Stead. Uh, in fact, it's quite rough nappy down here, but soft in the upper quarters. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, hardware, black metal, but in a hexagonal nut shape. They're really nicely backed. There's no scratchy bits at all. Very nice. Leather lined, I think I already said. Devier. Uh, difficult to measure. Oh, it's interesting. The top of the collar is turned in so that it's not a rough edge and then the leather lining is, is cut leather. So that should be quite comfortable, I think, on the ankle. Uh, in terms of the heel shape, it's quite up and down. Many boots do that, even the Iron Ranger from Red Wing does that. And you have to wear it to break that in in order for it to cup your heel. So with a thick uh, veg tan leather midsole, and a thick rubber wedge sole. It's going to be interesting how this breaks in at the flex point and see how much heel slip I get in the early days before the break-in. The mock toe stitching looks very neat and I think, yeah, I think there's two pieces of leather so it looks like to me like a true mock toe. That's one piece on the apron and one piece going around the rest of the van. The, uh, Gustavo tells me that the improvement also included extending the boot laces so that it's uh, uh, to ensure proper fastening, I guess, so that you can wrap them around the ankle. But man, these are long. <laughs> uh, the uppers have an increased height to accommodate that removable insole, and I do like the proportions anyway. Nice proportions. Okay, let's take a look at the other boot. Also wrapped in plastic. In fact, let me get rid of the box. Laces get in the way. Uh, remove this. Remove the extra padding on the inside. Very protected. Uh, and these long laces. Again, the feel of the suede is very nice, but you know, not Charles F. Stead standards. You wouldn't expect that. It really looks good. The finish, I have to say, is good. It's not fantastic, but it's good. I can't see any uh, flaws or uh, loose points that might cause structural issues. I do like the way the edge is left raw. It just gives it that really, really rugged look to it. And I think with that look, I would really be looking forward to getting this suede kind of all matted up and scratched and um, oiled up with, with hand, with oils from the hand and, and wetness and stuff. I think this would really look as good as a, as a rugged sort of um, either a work boot uh, or an outdoorsy, let's get it dirty boot. I'm not 100% sure that this would survive as in, in a hard manual and labor environment, uh, but I, I, at this moment, I can't see why not. So the finish is, is really good. All right, um, let's try and put them on feet, see how they fit, and then we'll summarize. Okay, so it actually took me a while to prepare for these uh, on-feet shots because I realized as I first tried to put them on that um, 
uh, obviously at the workshop when they when they laced up the boots for packing they missed every second eyelet <laughs> and that also i think tells you why those laces look so darn long uh, if you actually lace them up properly the laces aren't enormously long uh, at all um, so that's the first time i put my foot in this boot and true to size 8.5 us uh, it fits really well I think there's enough lace to go around the ankle, as I suspected, but not uh, too long a, 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 a knot at the, at the end of the lacing. So at 8.5, that slipped in really well. Uh, it feels really comfortable. It's nice at the ball of the foot, which is an important part for me because I have uh, big knuckles, particularly on the outside. Uh, and this part here often pushes up against a boot if it's too narrow. I can feel the toe structure, uh, but on the walk, that is probably okay. Now, while I put the boots on, uh, I'm reading from my notes to see if there's anything else I can tell you. Uh, the Gen 2 Nomad Last is meant to be appreciably uh, more volume to give comfort. Uh, there's an extended shoelaces to ensure proper fastening as I said earlier but I don't think they're necessarily enormously long I guess I don't know about what the old ones were like but maybe they weren't made to go around the ankle I'm a bit 50 50 about going around the ankle uh, so but it doesn't bother me either way so again that feels really comfortable so um, they fit really well at true to size, so I would recommend you going true to size uh, US 8.5D and these are uh, fitting to my feet, which is US 8.5D. And I'm, I'm verging on an E in, in the ball, so these are nice and roomy. Um, I can feel the sort of foam underneath the removable insole. And if you don't like that, you can remove that and put a, a thick veg tan insole in like from Dale's Leatherworks. I think Dale is still making those leather insoles. Feels really good and stretchy. While I'm testing them out, tell you a bit about Devier. Gustavo and Danielle are the founders of Devier. Goal of the brand is to uh, create handmade small batches in North America. Started a few years ago in their mid twenties, would you believe? Uh, they discovered craftsmanship in locally made hand-built footwear and decided to emphasize that. And in their designs, they're trying to combine the resilience, i.e. ruggedness, I guess, of North American boots with the comfort and quality of the European product. Uh, these certainly feel very comfortable. So they invested in research and development and took well-established footwear brands, took them apart <laughs> to see what made them good. Uh, and in order to scale their manufacturing, they partnered with one of the best engineers in Guanajuato, uh, which is the state in Mexico in which uh, Leon is based. So, I think they're fantastic. They feel good. I will try them out over the next few months and then bring you a proper review after I've worn them for a few months. Let's summarize. So let's talk about value. Now, this sells on their website for 220 US dollars. So that falls in the ballpark of Thursday boots, uh, as well as the uh, Thoroughgood uh, Mokto. Boots within that sort of range. Now, how would they compare against those two? I mean, it's a Mokto, so let's look at the Thoroughgood Mokto. This is a handcrafted boot. The Thoroughgood Mokto is a factory produced boot. I think the quality of the materials in the Thoroughgood is actually better. It's made in the USA, um, and the products uh, are put together in the USA, the materials. However, I've always found the QC in Thoroughgoods kind of hit and miss. Some of them are great. I've had a pair of boots from Thoroughgood that are, that are pretty good, and I've had a pair where the stitching of the lace, uh, lace facings are off-center. In terms of these boots, okay, uh, the tannage is Mexican, uh, I'm not quite sure where all the other products are from, but I'd suggest that the veg tan midsoles and so on are Mexican. What's wrong with that? Mexico and particularly Leon produces some of the best materials used by Thursday and others. Now, comparing to the Thursday boot, 
it's $20 more expensive if you're looking at the $199 uh, range that's made in Leon in Mexico. Uh, if you compare it against the uh, Made in America uh, Vanguard type series, it's about $40 cheaper. Interestingly enough, I think the finish on the Thursday Captains, for example, that come out of Leon, Mexico, are better than these. Uh, it's just that the, the stitching and so on uh, has had some practice, I think, and the quality control is really good. Not that there's anything wrong with these, they just don't look as well finished. Interestingly enough, I don't think uh, the Vanguards made in America have quite the same QC. They're a little bit hit and miss, in my opinion, and from what I've seen on social media. So, in terms of value to price, I think these are really fitting into that $220 category. And so that's it. Um, the Dievier Nomad Generation 2 boot. I hope you like this review, or at least this opening and first impressions. And if you do, you know what to do. Click on the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please, why don't you consider subscribing and watching my other videos as they come out, uh, and I put them out every week. So until the next time, you take care out there, and I'll see you soon.